Hey, I'm Ben, Ben Avery, and this is Strangers and Aliens. And I'm so glad that you've joined me here today to just talk with you a little bit. And I, I want to share just a, a brief a brief word that hopefully is a word of encouragement and hope to you. That's one of the things that we really value here at Strangers and Aliens is to give encouragement. And one of the other things we do is we take things from pop culture and, and make spiritual applications. We like to call them weak connections. <laughs> Now, the connection between the spiritual application and the pop culture reference may be weak, but I hope that the application is strong. As I was thinking about some just random things, they all kind of pulled together. And it all started with uh, hearing someone talk about letting things live rent-free in their head. And for some reason, that caused me to think of the scene, actually two scenes from two different movies, but the first scene that made me think about was a scene from... Street Fighter. Now, it's not a great movie. I will give you that. But there is one thing that has stuck with me. It's a haunting moment, which when I went to film school, the haunting moment was a moment that sticks with you outside of the context of the film. And you can have a haunting moment in almost any kind of artistic experience. Books, comics, movies, audio drama, songs, even photographs. You know, you can have a, a haunting moment moment and the haunting moment for me from street fighter is not unique to me in fact you probably if you've seen the movie you would remember the scene as well where chun li is confronting major bison about what he did to her life what he did to her village she goes through this whole long story about all this stuff that he had done you're just such a big man coming in and using your weapons against pitchforks and all that kind of thing and then she says my father saved his village at the cost of his own life you had him shot as you ran away, a hero at a thousand paces. And Major Bison just looks at her like, I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. He says, I'm sorry, I don't remember any of it. His delivery, his delivery of the lines that are coming up definitely carry the scene. But her reaction is what stuck with me, where she just looks at him like, wait, what? She says, you don't remember? And she says this look, absolute look of confusion on her face. And Bison says, for you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. And it's a great moment in a mediocre or horrible film, depending on how you look at it. Um, I think there's enough bad in it that's good bad, but not enough good in it to make it too enjoyable for revisiting but this scene man this scene and then another scene that's similar to it where you have another character who's just being driven by something that the villain doesn't even recognize because he doesn't recognize her it's the scene at the end of endgame where wanda says to thanos you took my everything and he says i don't even know who you are and she says you will and it's interesting, I mean, that whole scene, she's actually talking to a variant of Thanos who really doesn't know who she is. He, he, this is in his life before he actually destroyed Vision and, and caused Wanda's life to just go into a spiral. And talking about going into a spiral, I mean, after this, Wanda goes into WandaVision. And after WandaVision, she goes into the, the not the Mountain of Madness, Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness. I mean, there, her whole life just goes into a spiral because of what happened now granted those two situations uh of other people letting things live rent free in their head they're pretty extreme they're fictional fortunately but they're they're very extreme and you know there's a matter of of emphasis and degree here um they both lost family they both had a villain who did some horrible things but the villain wasn't doing it to them and the villain doesn't even recognize the role that he played in their life there's a whole nother message that could be talked about where you don't even recognize the consequences of, of your actions or the the wake of destruction left behind you in, in the wake of your actions but that's them we're talking about the people who their lives became were given a singular focus which was this horrible thing that happened to them now it's hard to let go of things no matter how big or how small, bad things, when they happen, they stick with us. Words, bad words stick with us. Uh, when, you know, we re all remember, as soon as I say, can you remember someone making fun of you when you were a kid? You can. You can remember someone making fun of you. You can remember those words sticking with you. And they reside in your head. Now, some of them, they I just brought them up because I said that, and I'm sorry. But some of those things 
maybe especially more recent things, they're sticking around in their head they're, and they're, they're living rent free in your head. And these are all things that, that mire us down. And some of them are things that people have done, but I don't want to just focus on things that people have done because there are other things that we just let live in the forefront of our minds. Money is probably the big one that I think of. Um, FOMO, fear of min- missing out, you know, and jealousy of other people and, the, and their successes. These are all things that can just stick in our head and they become focus for us and they take away from our where our focus sh- should be. Anger at people, at family, at coworkers, sometimes anger at people who they don't even know they did anything to bother us. And sometimes it's people who've done things on purpose. But these are all things that mire us down and pull our focus away from the one place that actually deserves our focus. This is something that I'm really having to currently work on. I'm I'm dealing with um, some health and wealth issues. I've got kids growing up, going into college. I've got a I've got another child who's who's in middle school. There's a whole thing there where you have a, a preteen kid in your life, you know. Um, and there's all these things that are, I tend to and let just drag me down and drag down my focus. And I've said this before, and I'm going to be saying it again. This is something that I have been working on is is lifting my eyes up, lifting my eyes up away from the mire and toward the one who will pull me out of out of the mire. So as I was preparing for a devotional lesson for our basketball program at work, I was taking a look at an old story that I've read and heard many, many, many times. And I, whenever I do that, I try and find something new. And this time I, I did. I was able to find that kind of new thing for me to grab onto. For me to grab onto. Now we're talking about Moses and we're talking about him getting called. He's in the wilderness and he's he's it's not a great place for him. He doesn't necessarily like his life right now. He's a shepherd and he sees something. He sees the burning bush. And and this is what we tend to put our focus on with this story. We focus on the fact that he has his own Thanos or Major Bison and the Egyptians and the Pharaoh back home. We tend to focus on him being out there and we focus on the fiery bush we focus on god saying i am and that's these are great things to focus on we focus on the fact that god's calling moses and moses is denying the call but let's change focus just a little bit and notice god's words here in exodus when the lord saw that he had gone over to look god called out to him from the the bush moses moses here i am he answered do not come closer he said remove the sandals from your feet for the place where you're standing is holy ground Then he continued, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people in Egypt, and I have heard them crying out because of their oppressors. I know about their sufferings, and I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them from that land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. (laughs) Sounds sticky. Uh, Then Moses asks God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And God answers, "You, will, I will be with you. This will be a sign to you. And Moses says, if I go, who should I say has sent me? And God says, I am who I am. This is what you're to say. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is how I'm to be remembered in every generation. When he says this, he's saying, I am. I've never changed. I'm the God of your, your ancestors, and I'm the God of your descendants. I'm not going to change. I am. Past, present, future. And so I taught about that. And that that was actually the focus of the lesson was the name. I am. But what got a brief mention in my 10-minute devotional and also got a lot of headspace in the week after was God's words. This idea that he has seen, he has heard the cry, he knows. He saw, he heard, he knows. And this is the message of hope for you. As you are in your own mire, as you are in your own quicksand or whatever you want to call it, as you are in your own place and space that is not where you would want to be, as you're dealing with your own Thanos or your own major bison, God hears, he sees, and he knows, and he wants to help you. Now, the timing may not be what we want in our timing. There's a problem I'm dealing with right now that I really would have liked to have been taken care of eight months ago. And it's just gotten a little bit worse and worse over time. But I know and have hope that God is going to take care of that. That God is going to take care of me. And so whether you know Christ and his love, whether you know God and his love, or whether you don't and you've never experienced God's love and don't experience, you know, haven't experienced God in your life, 
He wants you to know that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he loves you. He knows you. He sees you. He hears you. And he is there for you. But here's the thing that I also want to think about. We're letting these things live rent-free in our head, but we are in God's headspace. He sees us and hears us and knows us, and it's not rent-free. He paid the price. He paid the price because he loves you so much. That's pretty awesome. No, that's not pretty awesome. That's just straight awesome, okay? <laughs> so hopefully this was a, a word of encouragement for you. I, I, I hope that the weak connection made for a strong application. But I also hope that you know God's love. And if you don't know him, if you don't know about his love for you, I, I just recommend find friends of yours who are believers and, and just talk with them about it. Maybe find a minister at a local church and just, just talk to them about it. Maybe someone from your family. Or even just you know drop us a line here. I'd love to chat. And if you do know God and his love, I hope that this was just a reminder to you that as you look around and have all these things hanging out rent free in your head, that you look at what God was saying to Moses and God hasn't changed. He is the same I am that he was back then. And he will be the same I am in our future. He hasn't changed. He hears the cry of his people. And that's you. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Uh, definitely check out links below. Check out our podcast and you know check out other episodes here on the YouTube channel. Please hit like, hit subscribe. But until next time, Godspeed.